listened to the same frequency so they could hear the program. But I didn't want the radio to watch the Today Show or Fear Factor. I wanted it so that I could go to the movies on Saturday night. In the federal prison system, every weekend, they screen a movie. And the movies reliably fall into three categories. You've got low comedy, high melodrama, and anything with an animal protagonist. <laughs> when they screened Hidalgo, uh, the horse dies at the end, and I found myself surrounded by sobbing convicts. Movie night was the collective social event. Everybody went. Everybody, you know, folks would go to the same screenings and sit in the same seats with their friends. And even the biggest loner in the prison would make the scene. And after weeks and then months of trying to follow my lawyer's advice and keeping to myself all meek and mild, I wanted to make the scene too. I wanted in on the action. And that radio was the golden ticket to movie night because otherwise you were just reading lips. But every week, no radios, Carmen. I wanted that radio for another reason too. I needed it to escape. Since I had arrived in February, I had been fleeing out of the unit building oh, mind you going 500 down but not to a 1500 little gravel track that we were allowed to use i would go out there in the freezing cold and crunch around in that ice and snow to get away from that noise to get away from the gossip and the fights and the human stew that i was a part of in that prison and i wanted that radio to get even further away i wanted to hear music I wanted to hear the news. I wanted to hear voices that had nothing to do with that awful place. I wanted to remember that the outside world existed. And still, every week, no radios, Carmen! The, the ice and snow down on that track turned into mud and then dried up in the spring sunshine. And still, week after week, they're out of radios. I was getting desperate. So one day, I was down in the dorms doing work as an electrician. That was my job. Um, well, actually, I was hanging up illegal hooks. Um, yeah, one of the rules of the prison is that you can have no personal items anywhere in your living quarters except in your locker or hung up. And those hooks were in very, very short supply. But as an electrician, I had access to tools and I could fashion a makeshift hook that I could install in someone's area. And the word spread like wildfire that upon request, I would do just that, hang up those hooks. And all of a sudden, on, women boat. I didn't know, some women I didn't like, were coming to me and asking me to hook them up. I'm 35. <laughs> And I never said no. I always did it. And one of my coworkers in the electric oh shop got frustrated with me one day. Oh, she yeah, said, Piper, I don't, mind. I don't, mind you going you don't have to do this. Why do you bother? And I said, no one is looking out for us in this hole. We have to look out for each other. So on this particular day, I was in B dorm, my own dorm, hanging up hooks, screwing them into the wall. And I spotted Lionel. Now, Lionel, unlike me, was doing serious time, a long sentence. And she was the acknowledged consigliere of the warehouse and the commissary, which was a plum prison job. She was a formidable figure. Uh, but she was my neighbor. She was not my friend. But she lived about three feet away from me. And she would say good morning to me. And, you know, we found ourselves brushing our teeth side by side before lights out. She'd give me a smile every now and then. So I got up my courage and I approached her. And I said, uh, Lionel, I'm really sorry to bother you, but uh, I've got a question. And I explained my radio problem. And Lionel just looked at me. I said, Lionel, I am going crazy without music. The CEO won't tell me when that shipment is coming in. Do you know? She just stared at me, not smiling. She said, Kermit, you know you're not supposed to ask warehouse folks about the inventory. It's against the rules. 
said, no, Lionel, I, I didn't know that. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. I could have kicked myself. I felt like a jackass. So I had broken a cardinal rule. Another thing you hear again and again when you're locked up is don't ask questions in prison. This in response to essentially any question. <laughs> so now not only did I not have a radio, I had committed a huge prison faux pas. So uh -huh. I was dejected, to say the least. Yeah. And the next week, I almost didn't even put the radio on my commissary list. Why bother? You know, some women who had shopped before me were complaining. They were still out. And I just dragged my tail into that commissary building. And so when a shiny, bright new radio came hurtling into my grocery pile, I just stared at it until the CO began to scream, what's wrong with you, Carmen? I guess it's true what they say about blondes, huh? Keep moving, Carmen, move, move, move. I began to shove my purchases, including that precious radio, into my laundry bag as quickly as I could. And as I did that, I looked past the CO, back into the commissary, and I could see Lionel back there working and she would not meet my eye. I turned around and I walked out of that commissary and I was elated and not because of what I had in that bag. The idea that Lionel, a prisoner, one of us, could make something happen just like that was thrilling to me. The fact that she had the power to get that radio was was stunning to me and the fact that she had chosen to give it to me was absolutely astounding I, I knew in that moment that I had her regard she saw me who I was we were supposed to be in that place and it had made my heart sing
Why are state lawmakers trying to pass legislation that would limit those events? On the next morning edition from NPR News. Tomorrow morning from 5 until 9 on 897 NPR News. Hi, it's Rachel Martin with Morning Edition. There comes a time when you've just got to let go of that old vehicle. Lots of great memories, but at this point, it is just taking up space. You can try to sell it, but that can be a hassle. So here's a thought. Let this station take it off your hands. Proceeds from the sale benefit this station, and you could get a tax break. Support 89.7 NPR News by donating your car. Visit WMSU.org slash cars for more information. This is the Moth Radio Hour from PRX. I'm Jennifer Hickson, senior producer at the Moth. In 2009, I was looking for an undertaker. We were working on a show called Stiffs, stories of the nearly and dearly departed. Four stories were cast, most of them pretty serious. I needed a story on the fun side. I asked around to see if anyone knew of any funny undertakers, and the problem was pretty obvious. My calls to funeral homes asking for hilarious undertakers were not well received. Eventually, I put in a cold call to a school of mortuary science and asked, Hey, have any of your students been particularly funny? By the way, undertakers return to school regularly to learn new techniques. This is the sort of stuff you learn when you work at the mall. Anyway, I got a number. It led me straight to Chris Tomlin, who's been in the business for more than two decades now. If you've ever wondered what undertakers are really thinking, here's Chris Tomline 